Such local stewardship meant that much of the blackbird remained pristine well into the 20th century and unchallenged by development. The land's not available because those of us who are here aren't interested in selling any of it. As you saw with the, the battle with Shell, we, we hung in there tooth and nail trying to preserve what the heritage represented there. 45 years later, the battle with Shell stands as one of the defining events in the Blackbird's history and the history of environmental protection in Delaware. Shell came in and started buying up land for the eventual purpose of building a refinery. And there were people down there who were for it, and there were people down there against it. And uh, one of the early people against it was a farmer named Jack Dukes who still lives there. Others felt differently. And the Dukes, in their outspoken desire to protect the blackbird, became lightning rods for public opinion. Yet the Dukes and their supporters also attracted those interested in saving this little-known watershed, including Delaware wild lands. Our role was to carefully pick out and buy key areas to checkerboard and try to keep Shell from getting one great big piece. All that was was a slowing tactic. It, we knew that that wouldn't be enough in its own uh, to, to prevent it. Despite enormous odds, the Dukes and others generated enough support to attract the attention of Delaware's governor and save the Blackbird with the passage of the Coastal Zone Act. You can imagine how much power had to come from the people in order to make this happen. With all those powerful interests, our State Chamber of Commerce, nearly every law firm in Delaware being hired and assigned to work on this project, and the labor unions, with the exception of UAW, all fighting to uh, make it happen. And the people were able to convince people in government uh, that they had to pass this act in order to save the place. Mm -hmm.